This is a brand new tutorial series for people that are new to Flutter and Flame. The objective is to learn how to you learn both Flutter and Flame uh, from beginner steps. We're going to eventually create some type of visual novel where our character Galatrix will go on a series of adventures and we'll create the framework for this type of visual novel. So I'm going to start with a brand new Flutter project. So it's Flutter, Create, and Galatrix. And right here you could press Enter. But I'm going to make my code a bit smaller. So I'm going to specify uh, the platforms equals Linux in my case, and Android. And I'll just create the, uh, the additional packages for Android and Linux in my case. So we'll change directory into um, the new project that we just created and you can see that there's just the Linux and the Android here. So I'm going to add the flame package flutter pub at flame and added the dependencies that we're going to need for flame. So I'll do code dot. I'm using VS code. VS code is a free editor. Let's go into the extensions. I have a number of things installed here. Uh, the most important one that you'll need is Dart and you will need Flutter. You might also want this Flutter Awesome Snippets here. So assuming your VS Code is set up, you have Flutter installed, uh, then you're going to the main Dart and it may or may not be a bit overwhelming because there's a lot here. So we're just gonna delete everything here. And then you're just left with this main with this run app. And the run app is actually from the, the Flutter system here. Initially, let's comment it out. So you just have main, right? So you could go print hello world. So at this point, if you're on Linux, you could just go to the top here and run without debugging. So I have the run app commented out, but for the Linux desktop at least, it will pop open this window and you have the, the code here, that the output. So depending on what you're running it on, you might have to use this run app here and then pass it uh, some type of widget. Like a material app. There should be uh, no difference here. You may you may not need this run app section here. In, in my case, I don't need it. So I'll comment it out. So in the section here, you can print out uh, which you would normally expect, right? So for if i equals zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. And for Dart, we're using these curly brackets to run something within the for loop. And if you, it'll print it out five times. And with string interpolation, you could also insert the integer and it's gonna convert it to a string automatically. And then you'll have the full string here down here. This concept of a loop is quite uh, important. So the screen here it will be uh, X and Y coordinates with zero, zero at the top. So if you were to think, well, if you wanted to move something over on the X coordinate, and let's say that it was X here.
just to imagine. And it would quickly go, it'd cycle through it, and within a second, you'd have uh, 100 uh, X positions. So unlike Flutter, the flame system has a built-in loop that's running continuously. So let's uncomment this thing out here. And this run app is from Flutter. You normally are dropping in a material app at some point, maybe hidden within the template code, but you normally are dropping in that material app. Well, for Flame, there's this new thing, game widget here, and it accepts a parameter game. So we have to create a Flame game to pass it in there. So we'll class, and this is a name that we're gonna make up here. So I'm gonna call mine Galatrix game. So Galatrix is the name of the character uh, that we'll have in our story. Galatrix game extends flame game. And we can set it up up here. So var game equals Galactrix game. We instantiated this class right here. And the reason this is working right here is because it did an automatic import on line one here for the flame game. So now it's all black because the flame default background is all black. And we have a nice beautiful canvas here on the right hand side. And this game has a bunch of optional uh, methods in here that's going to make it a lot easier for us to make our game on this canvas. So one of the big advantages is that there's a game loop in here. So we'll override the existing method in here, which is update. So this update is built into flame. And so if you were to do a similar thing where you could go like print uh, x, so we'll create a temporary variable var x equals one. And then if you run it, there's an automatic loop that's occurring in here. So we're not gonna use this loop right now. This is to show you the main advantage or one of the main advantages of Flame in that there's a built-in loop that can update this screen. So unlike Flutter, this screen is constantly updating. So we'll start off with a, a we're gonna load an image in here. So we're gonna overwrite one of the existing flame methods again. In this case, we're gonna do future void on load async, oops. Async. And then we'll run the super class for onload. And what we want to do is load an image, but we're going to store our images on our local file system in a new directory called assets images. And then in our pubspec.yaml, we're going to scroll down here and this section here where it has assets We'll now put that directory assets images. This thing is blank right now, so we're gonna to need to grab an image. You can use any image. I'm using the images from this site called Art Breeder. And the specific character that I'm using for Galactrix, I'll have the link down here. It's by Sarah X K Y Y. So you could just uh, save this image here. So under the assets, images, we'll just save Galatrix as Galatrix1. Galatrix. So this isn't the name the artist placed on it. This is the name of the character that I'm using it. This is under the Creative Commons 0. 
We need to run Flutter Pub get. By default, the Flame system will look for assets slash images, so we won't need to uh, specify it. So create a new variable. Collatrix sprite equals. We'll have it be a sprite component, which is part of Flame. And in the onload method, we'll actually load the image from the disk. So I'll use a cascade operator, which are these two dots here. So there's a load sprite method in here from the flame system. And we can put the name of the file that we just loaded. And then we have to specify a size. In the flame system, the size is a series of vectors. So we have a two position vector, so it's vector two. And actually we'll make it the same. So vector, vector two dot all for this one. And we'll just make it 200. Once the sprite is set up, we can add the sprite to the game using the keyword add. This is again from the flame system. And we can load our sprite. Now we have Galactrix here. We're going to drop in a background. I'm using these backgrounds from itch.io. This is cronbits.itch.io. I'll put the link in the, uh, the, the video description. So these are actually also made with Art Breeder. Uh, these are free, right? So you can name your price. It says $9.95 here, but uh, you, you want to check it out. So you just go, no thanks. And then you download it right here. Like the rest of the uh, art reader stuff, there's no credit link back is needed. Although, you know, I'm obviously including a link to this guy to, uh, and you know, if you do want to pay for it, feel free to do so, but it's, it's not required. So once you download the pack and unzip it, you'll have this thing for free samples. So we're going to select uh, some of these images as the background for uh, Galactrix. So maybe I'll just take the first, uh, the first four here and I'm going to create a subdirectory under images for whoops backgrounds and I'll drop the background images in here okay now I'll call it uh, Oops. I'll call it, I'm going to rename all of them. So background one. So go ahead and uh, do the rest of them. Okay. So I actually renamed it. So this is the first one because she's the character Galactrix is going to be isolated on this island here, this castle. So this is background one. And then background two is this type of scene here where there's going to be another a hero uh, that saves her and brings her to this island. So then background three is this type of uh, forested area here. And then background four will be uh, some type of stream area where they're heading over to their location, their goal. Going back to the pubspec.yaml, we're going to need to actually add the assets and that specific folder, which is now called backgrounds. And while I'm here, I'm going to click on this image again, and I'm going to create another folder for characters. I'm going to move Galactrix into the characters folder. And we will need to specify characters here. And also put characters here.
there will be multiple characters. Okay, let's see if this game still runs. Uh, it's still running, so let's drop in the background. So another way to add the background is it's, it's going to be in layers, so we need to add the background before we add Collatrix in. Is just um, so we don't actually need to create a variable for it. So there's a property sprite, and we will load the sprite. Load sprite is built in. And we have to specify the full path here, or the, at least the, the sub path here, which is background and background one.png. And we probably want to put the size. Oops. Size. And then there's a property size. The second size here is the size of the game. So this second size is from the flame game. Okay, let's reload it. Okay, assets, images, background, background, one dot PNG. Let's check it. Let's check it out. Okay, I had to fully stop the game right here, and then I, I started it again. And after that, um, I ran Flutter Pub get to uh, the background is loading right here. But we want it to be dropped down, so. Using this size property again, we can get the bottom of the screen. So let's uh, let's push her down. So there's a property called anchor, and we can set the anchor to be her lower, uh, the lower left of Galactrix. Anchor dot bottom left. Then we have to align her. So we'll have to set a position for Galactrix equals. So the, the position is also a vector. It's a two position. So let's see. You can think about the X and Y coordinates. So the first X is we want. So it's bottom left is her anchor point, right? So we want this this edge here to be at the very edge of the screen in this example. So it will be zero. So this is zero and the number of green systems increase this way. For the y axis, this is also zero. So this point here is zero, zero. It increases this way and this way. So to get the, let's say, okay, let's say I just put her at a hundred, right? So and I reload it. This edge here is at 100. So remember, the anchor point here is, is at the bottom. So if I go 300, because Galactrix is 200 by 200 pixels, this is going to be 100 pixels. But if we just specify it, you may not get the right sizing here, um, depending on how your game is. So what we're going to do is actually use the size of the of the entire screen. So this size is from the flame game. And there is a Y component to it. So since it's aligned to her bottom edge, she should be right there, right? So if you're, if it was smaller, and then you, when you started out with a different mobile phone, she's always going to be perfectly aligned here. In the next video, we're going to get to these backgrounds and may get to the uh, actual text for it too with the characters. So these backgrounds are a little large. I'm actually going to have to reduce the size of it too. But subscribe to the channel and you can figure out how to switch these backgrounds with your characters. Have a great day.